if you do so. Vail, Tahoe, St. Moritz, ski resorts that often attract the well-to-do now. A growing middle class is taking to the slopes in China. CNN's Emily Chang joins us. They're not quite snow-capped mountains, rather hills blanketed with man-made snow, rising above not quite chalets, but a modest little village. This is the Nanshan Ski Resort, just outside Beijing. And this is skiing in China. It's not so bad. I mean, it's... They ski like the drive cars. With enthusiasm, so to say. Just a few years ago, skiing was more of a novelty in China, meant mostly for professionals or the rich. But new resorts are popping up every year, attracting a growing middle class that can afford to spend money on leisure. In northern China, there wasn't much to do in the winter, says this man. Now skiing offers great outdoor entertainment. Nanshan saw almost 150,000 skiers last year and expects up to 20% more this year. No signs of the economic crisis here, instead a playful family affair. It's fun and exciting, this man says. My kid loves it. There are 21 runs here, most of them beginner or intermediate level. None of them more than one or two minutes long. Perfect for people who just want to give it a try. Some of us still have a lot to learn. Luckily, there are plenty of instructors, many of them trained abroad, along with the staff. I've been to France, Austria, Germany, Switzerland, Korea, and Japan, says the deputy manager. The idea is to bring the best of skiing, skill, and culture back to China with a little local flair. Lunch is not surprisingly a very Chinese affair. You have sheep kidney, cattle tendon, and squid on a stick. The best part is, it's all affordable. Lunch costs just two to three U.S. dollars, and skiing around forty dollars a day. Prices that certainly beat those fancy resorts almost anywhere else in the world. Emily Chang, CNN, Beijing.